What if our future medical exams included dogs smelling us to detect any presence of cancer? Well, the research suggests this isn't such a far-off idea. Tune in for the details only here on the People Scientist podcast. listening to The People Scientist, the podcast dedicated to helping us optimize our health with the latest scientific findings on neuroscience, physiology, and nutrition. I, your host, Dr. Stephanie Caligiuri, a nutritionist, physiologist, and neuroscientist, will be here with you every single week, bringing us information to ignite our thinking, to help us be one step closer to the healthiest we can be. Hello, my People Scientist Army, and welcome back to the People Scientist Podcast for episode 116, where every episode I try to share some interesting scientific evidence so that we can all become a little bit smarter and healthier every week. How are you doing today? How is your day going? Thank you so much for inviting me into your day, for allowing me to keep you company with whatever it is you are doing whether that be commuting somewhere, while working out, cleaning, or to relax before bed. I hope I can give you a little bit of interesting information to ponder today. Before I jump into today's episode, I want to give a shout out to Stephen, who bought me a few coffees last week to say thank you for the podcast episode. Thank you so much, Stephen. Your coffee is powering me today for today's episode. And if by chance any of you want to buy me a coffee to say thanks for the podcast, you can do so via Venmo or Patreon. The info on how to do that is in the description box to this episode. So what are we talking about today? Well, when I went back home to Winnipeg last month, I got to see my dog, Roxy, and it made me appreciate how brilliant dogs are and how they have so much potential. They are useful in things like in the police force, in helping individuals that are visually impaired, in assistance of individuals with physical disabilities. Dogs are used for drug detection, explosives detection, to detect a seizure before it happens in individuals living with epilepsy. It's quite amazing. So what we are going to talk about today is the use of dogs in being able to detect cancer. I think it would be brilliant to have more veterinarians, dog trainers, and scientists team up in order to uncover the potential of dogs and all that they have to offer to humans. So today we are going to talk about the ability of dogs to detect cancer. What did the study say? Can dogs actually do this with good accuracy? What is the mechanism? How can dogs detect cancer? And what does the future hold for dogs in diagnosis and in the medical setting? Well, let's find out. So as we always do, let's start off with some core takeaways. I think dogs are incredible animals. Their heightened sense of smell has proven incredibly useful in many situations. Recent data suggests that dogs may be useful in cancer diagnosis as well. Diagnosis of cancer in its early stages is essential for one's ability to receive early treatment and to have better outcomes. Unfortunately, many cancers are silent until their later stages, and late detection is a large variable contributing to poor outcomes. But decades ago, we realized that the presence of cancer in the human body might emit certain compounds in our breath and body odor. These compounds might be detected by certain dogs due to their heightened sense of smell. There are case reports of pet dogs paying attention to and having unusual behavior with skin cancer growths. Based on those case reports, scientists decided to conduct studies to see if dogs could accurately determine if someone had cancer based on a urine sample, a breath sample, or body odor. In fact, in many studies, the dogs had greater than 97% accuracy. Let's imagine a future where our annual medical exam includes a trained dog to sense the presence of any cancer. This could be, for example, a first-pass diagnostic test. 
then if the dog indicates a positive test, that future testing, such as blood tests and imaging, could then be carried out. The studies indicate that this could be a real possibility, and I hope so. This would not only enhance early cancer detection, particularly of the silent type of cancers like ovarian cancer or pancreatic cancer, but having dogs as part of a medical exam would also likely make the patient experience so much better and less stressful. So now, how about we get into the scientific details as to how dogs are able to detect the presence of cancer. The idea that dogs could detect the presence of cancer in humans was first published in the scientific literature by Williams and Pembroke back in 1989 in the journal The Lancet. In this report, they wrote, quote, The first patient became aware of the skin cancer on her leg because of her dog, which happened to be a cross between a Border Collie and a Doberman, would constantly sniff at it. The dog showed no interest in the other moles on the patient's body, but frequently spent several minutes a day sniffing intently at this particular mole, even through the patient's pants. As a consequence, the patient became increasingly suspicious, and this behavior continued for several months and culminated in the dog trying to bite off the lesion when the patient wore shorts. This prompted the patient to seek further medical advice. This dog may have saved her owner's life by prompting her to seek treatment when the mole was still at a thin and curable stage. Perhaps malignant tumors such as melanoma, with their aberrant protein synthesis, emit unique odors, though undetectable to humans, are easily detectable by dogs with their well-developed sense of smell. So since this publication of this case report in The Lancet, scientists began to investigate the possibility of dogs being able to sense the presence of cancer. Since then, some well-designed and controlled studies have been carried out. So how about we dive into those? First, let's talk about the notion that cancer may emit volatile compounds that dogs may smell. It is believed that we as humans emit volatile organic compounds, they're called. For example, back in episode 110, I share some scientific research on how we emit chemo signals, which in animals are commonly called pheromones. We as humans can communicate our emotions with one another via the chemo signals we emit in our body odor. In episode 110, I share clinical trials where humans were made to feel a specific emotion, usually by watching a movie or looking at photos. And then their body odor was collected from their shirt or using cotton gauze. Then this shirt or cotton gauze was given to other people to smell. And these individuals were asked to predict the emotion that that person was feeling at the time. And people were able to predict with pretty good accuracy what the individual was feeling at the time. So in-person socializing and communication via our chemo signals is a really interesting area of research. And like I said, if that interests you, you can go back and listen to episode 110. But our chemo signals or volatile organic compounds may not only communicate our mood, but might also indicate our health status as well. It is thought that if we have an ailment, this might be emitted from our body and dogs that have a very powerful olfactory system or superior smelling capability, may have the capability to pick up on those volatile organic compounds. Now, scientists have realized for years that in individuals living with cancer, compounds may be emitted from our breath and sweat that might indicate the presence of cancer. For example, back in 2004, Dean Natali and colleagues published in the journal Biosensors and Bioelectronics, a study in which patients with lung cancer exhaled their breath into a collection tube for analysis. This this exhaled breath was analyzed via what they called an electronic nose. Now, this was compared to people without cancer and also compared with in-subjects before and after a patient underwent treatment for their cancer. In this study, 42 patients with cancer and 18 without cancer were used in the analysis. Each subject was required to follow the same diet and the same procedures for mouth hygiene. Measurements were performed in the morning before anyone ate any food or drank any beverages. The scientists used what they called an electronic nose to detect and measure the presence of different compounds in the participant's breath, such as aromatic compounds, amines, alcohols, ketones, alkanes, and benzene derivatives. Now, it was pretty remarkable that the electronic nose was able to accurately identify which patients were living with cancer, 
based on the breath samples. 100% of the lung cancer patients were correctly identified as having cancer. 94% of the cancer-free controls were correctly classified as not having cancer, and 6% of them had been classified as belonging to the post-surgery group. Now, concerning the samples from the post-surgery group, 44% had been classified as belonging to their own group, well, 56% has been classified as cancer-free healthy controls. And this might be influenced by how successful their treatment was for the patient. Now, what were the compounds in the breath of the individuals living with cancer? These compounds were mostly some alkanes like hexane and methylpentavand and benzene derivatives such as otoludine and aniline. Now, this study was interesting as this means that the breath of someone living with lung cancer seems to have a unique signature that is distinct from that of people without lung cancer, which is also distinct from people that underwent treatment for lung cancer. So this study provides support that individuals living with cancer might emit specific compounds in their breath that might be detected by an electronic nose or even by dogs that have a superior olfactory smelling system. Now in the next studies I will share, it may not only be detectable in our breath, but also in our urine and body odor as well. For example, Khaled in the journal PLOS One in 2015 analyzed urine samples from 59 patients with prostate cancer and 43 patients that were cancer-free. Using gas chromatography mass spectrometry, the scientists noted that certain compounds appeared more frequently in patients' urine samples that had prostate cancer. These compounds included 2,6-dimethyloctanol, pentanol, 3-octanone, and 2-octanone. But when the scientists tried to use the presence of these four compounds to be able to indicate if someone had prostate cancer or not, it was only 65% accurate. So there may be other compounds in the urine that the gas chromatography mass spectrometer was not able to pick up on to indicate the presence of cancer. But as I'm about to show, dogs may be far more accurate than 65%. So now let's dive into the studies indicating how well dogs perform for cancer detection and how they are trained. In the Journal of Urology, Taverna and colleagues published in 2015 the results of them training two three-year-old German Shepherd female dogs that were previously trained and bred to detect explosives. So these dogs were specifically bred from a genetic line and trained to have superior olfactory detection in order to find and detect explosives. Now, the scientists now trained the dogs to be able to identify prostate cancer based on urine samples. The dogs were tested on 362 patients with prostate cancer and on 540 healthy controls that were cancer-free. Now, when the scientists tested the dogs on the samples, their sensitivity was 100% for both the dogs, meaning if the patients did have cancer, the dogs every single time were able to determine and detect this. Now their specificity was 97.6 to 98.7%, depending on which of the two dogs. So again, incredibly high. The specificity indicated their ability to accurately differentiate between a urine sample from someone without cancer to someone with cancer. Now this is quite phenomenal if you ask me. A 97 to 100% accuracy rating. But not only that, what is also is amazing is that the dogs could positively detect the cancer or the patients living with prostate cancer, regardless of stage of cancer, regardless of medications that the patients were on, regardless of the patient age, regardless of how much prostate-specific antigen was present, which is a common marker of prostate conditions. So this also suggests that the dogs were able to detect what they call volatile organic compounds. So there may be products in the urine that we aren't even aware of yet that the dogs are able to detect in patients with prostate cancer. Initially, it was thought that the dogs were detecting prostate-specific antigen, a marker of prostate conditions. However, this didn't seem to be the case, as uh, using their detection training program, even patients with low prostate-specific antigen levels but had prostate cancer the dogs could still accurately identify that the patient had prostate cancer. Also, intriguingly, some of the patients in the control group, they specifically made sure to have cancer, but not prostate cancer. And the dogs were able to be specifically trained to detect prostate cancer. So if a patient, say, let's say, had lung cancer, the dog would not confuse the two. They could actually differentiate whether the patient had prostate cancer or not. 
This illustrates that dogs may be trained to be able to detect specific types of cancers as well. So if a dog can not only detect the presence of cancer, but be trained to indicate the type or location of cancer, that is even more phenomenal. How about another interesting study? Willis in the journal BMJ in 2004 trained six dogs of different ages and varying mixed breeds. Now, the scientists did not specify the breeds in this paper, but just indicated a wide range and mix of breeds. These dogs, unlike the previous study, were not trained nor bred for scent detection. The last study used German Shepherd dogs that were previously bred and trained for explosives detection. So in this study, these were ordinary dogs with no previous training. The scientists attempted over a seven-month period to train the dogs to detect if a urine sample came from a patient with diagnosed bladder cancer or not. After seven months, the dogs had a 41% success rate, which was better than the random chance of being correct at 14%. So the scientists conclude that normal dogs may be trained to help detect if someone has bladder cancer based on urine samples. However, dogs that are bred and trained for scent detection appear to be far superior for specificity and sensitivity. So this capability may not be generalized to all dogs necessarily. Just like all dogs are not great at detecting the presence of explosives, drugs, nor be good police dogs. And it appears that German Shepherds, for example, might be a good breed for scent detection. How about another study? In 2019, in the journal Oncology, Thu Lo wanted to understand if dogs could detect the presence of breast cancer. In this study, two dogs that were Belgian shepherds were trained over five months to accurately detect the presence of breast cancer. These dogs had not been previously trained for scent detection. In this study, 51 women that were cancer-free and 36 women with breast cancer were participants. The women were asked to shower with unscented soap and to place a sterile gauze pad directly on their breast. In the scenario of women with cancer, they were to place the gauze in the location of the breast cancer tumor, and in the control group, they could place the gauze on either breast. The gauze was placed under a freshly washed with unscented soap bra, and they were to keep the gauze there overnight. The next morning, the women placed the gauze in a sterile sealed jar. These gauze pads were used for training of the two Belgian shepherd dogs. Now, how are the dogs trained, you might wonder? In this study, they went into the methodological details. The training relied on repeated memorization exercises. So the trainers would have boxes containing the gauze from women without cancer or with cancer. And the dogs were trained to sit in front of the box that contained the gauze from women with breast cancer. If they did this accurately, the dogs were rewarded. During training, in case of an incorrect detection, the dogs were not rewarded. And this was repeated nearly 800 times over five months. So after five months of training, how did the dogs fare? Well, the dogs were able to detect with an average accuracy 90% of the samples from women with breast cancer. I think that's so cool that by just placing cotton gauze on the breast and then having a dog smell it, that they are able to determine if a woman has breast cancer or not. And what's even more fascinating about these studies is that we don't completely understand how dogs are even able to do that or what the compounds are that they're picking up on, but simply just that the dogs are able to do it and that they're able to do it with 90% accuracy is very cool. Another interesting study in the Journal of Veterinary Behavior in 2019 is Mararka and colleagues attempted to train dogs to learn the scent of an ovarian cancer cell line. Now, ovarian cancer is a particularly silent and aggressive form of cancer that is very often caught only in the later stages. Early detection is so incredibly important to increase the odds of good outcomes for individuals. So scientists particularly aimed to see if dogs could be trained to help detect this silent cancer, ovarian cancer. So the scientists trained the dogs using an ovarian cancer cell line. These cells were taken from a patient with ovarian cancer many years ago, and the cells continue to grow in a lab and are used in cell culture experiments in ovarian cancer research. The scientists postulated that training dogs to sense isolated cancer cells from the cell line would be ideal for training, as the alternative, having dogs trained using recently dissected cancer from a patient, might have an individual sense specific to that person and may not be general to everyone. 
In this study, the scientists decided to train four dogs. Three were German Shepherds and one was a Labrador. Now, only one dog, a female German Shepherd of one and a half years old, successfully completed the training, and her name was Osa. And I love that they included the dog's names in this study. So Osa was able to accurately determine which samples included ovarian cancer cells. And this was compared to fallopian tube cells, cell culture media, and sterile filter paper as the controls. Now they wanted to also see if Osa could detect if someone had ovarian cancer based on their blood sample. So the scientists thought perhaps something was in the ovarian cancer cells that the dog was detecting that could also be present in patient blood. And Osa was able to accurately identify a blood sample taken from a woman with invasive ovarian cancer versus cancer-free blood samples. Now this study is really important as a pilot study for a couple of reasons. One, it shows that dogs may be trained far more easily using cancer cell lines that we use in the lab instead of requiring patient samples. So it makes the training process a lot easier now. And two, it illustrates that a compound or a collection of compounds exist in cancer cells that dogs can detect, and that the same compound or compounds may also be present in patient blood that dogs again can sense. This study is a pilot study that opens the door for future, more exciting research in terms of dogs' capabilities for detection of silent cancers. After reading these studies, it makes me wonder about the potential of dogs in medical settings. Can dogs become a part of screening clinics? Perhaps people would shower with unscented soap, then have the dog there to detect any presence of cancer. How cool would that be? I also think having a dog as a diagnostic test would be far better for people's mental health and well-being during a medical exam. I mean, dogs are used for therapeutic purposes so often. They elevate our mood in dramatic ways, particularly in stressful situations like when at the doctor's office and going for tests. And I hope that the future medical system will use dogs in diagnostic testing more, even as a first-pass detection, which can be followed up with imaging and blood tests. Now, we don't really understand the neuroscience behind how dogs are able to do this quite yet. I would, I, I would hypothesize that these volatile organic compounds that cancer cells may emit are detected by the olfactory system in dogs, and this detection is associated with curious and perhaps even aversive behaviors in the beginning, unless the dog is trained to know how to respond. Like in the scenario of these studies, the dogs were trained to sit in front of a positive sample during an exercise. Now, dogs clearly have a superior sense of smell because they have many olfactory receptors which are primarily located on the ethmoturbinates of their nasal cavity. They also have the vimeronasal organ, which is an additional site of odor detection that detects chemical signals. Now, their olfactory bulb then sends this information to other brain regions like the anterior olfactory nucleus, the piriform cortex, amygdala, and enterohinal cortex. And those other brain regions can influence the behavior and memory and cognition of the dog. For example, dogs can smell food, and this might recruit brain regions involved in reward and positive behavior to reinforce, yes, food is good. But the presence of volatile compounds being emitted from cancer cells might recruit different brain regions in dogs that we aren't quite aware of yet. Dogs may be trying to process the information coming from this chemical signal, and dogs may be uncertain what the signal is, or they may think this signal to be aversive or negative. But this is such an interesting area of research that I hope gains more attention in the years to come, because I think there is so much potential to be uncovered here. So that is a wrap, my people scientist army. This is episode 116, where I share some scientific evidence on how dogs may have the capability to detect the presence of cancer in humans. I think dogs are brilliant. Their ability to detect the presence of drugs, explosives, seizures before they happen, low blood sugar levels, and now even cancer. I think dogs would make a great addition to medical care. They would increase the mental health of patients and might be able to help with early detection of illness that may not have been detected otherwise, particularly for these silent type of cancers. I think dogs have the potential to really help here. So I hope that this episode was interesting and and insightful for you. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share the podcast with a friend. Follow me on social media for more information on the week's topic to see the papers I cite in each episode. Or if you really liked the episode, feel free to buy me a coffee to say thanks for the episode, Stephanie. The information on how to do that is in the description box to this episode. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I look forward to meeting you back here for another podcast episode 
in two weeks' time. Bye for now. I am a scientist simply sharing scientific evidence. Some of the clinical interventions I discuss are not appropriate for everyone. Before making any changes to your diet or lifestyle, please do consult the advice of your physician or dietitian. My opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect those of Mount Sinai Hospital and its affiliates. Thank you.